and welcome to the asylum. Happy holidays or uh, happy Honda days. Happy Toyota thon. What's the other one? Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. Chris uh, Whatever it is, right? Uh, happy holidays. As per our uh, previous video for the holiday season, we are doing holiday themed videos from the asylum, which I guess are all Christmas videos. Does Asylum have any like Kwanzaa or Hanukkah videos? No. Yeah. So sorry for that. Um, that we know. Honestly, anyway. we might we might mistakenly find one someday that's like hidden as like a slasher in the cold or something. Yeah. The I've only heard of one Kwanzaa movie, and it was like a really, really bad slasher film. Never thought. I've just heard about it because it's one of those like things that people know exists but they can't find like 100 feet so like <laughs> what is it the speed demon is that the other one that we can't find but one we day. do have christmas movies by the asylum yes who they do a lot of these with hallmark and other ones so yes. if you've seen a hallmark movie you've probably actually seen some movies by the asylum and yep, like this one Proudly emblazes asylum films in the opening with like a sky blue background. It's really weird to see the asylum logo not on solid black. Uh, yep. But yes, so today we're talking about, let me check my notes. A snow globe <laughs> Christmas. Snow globe Christmas. That's it. And, and I'm just going to say this there's a quote from this movie that I think summarizes this entire movie. And the quote is, you're so cliche. I'm actually mad at my brain right now. That pretty much summarizes this 2013 movie. This is a Christmas movie. It is taking the same plot of a 2007 movie with an actual cast member who's in this movie, being Christina Milan, or Milan, um, called Snow Globe. Why they had to have her in this movie, I'm not sure. She's hot, but okay. Um, Who was she? Christina Milan. She's uh, like the the darkest skin Latina chick. Oh, the angel. Mm -hmm. Sal. Sal. Yeah. But she's in the the 2007 movie. But this movie has Alicia Witt and Donald Faison, which honestly, those two alone make this movie better than pretty much most Asylum movies because. They're not my, they're not the best actors in the world, but they're pretty much effortlessly relaxed in what they do. I love Donald Faison. I always forget the guy's name. I do too, and I've met him. Um, I absolutely love him. Everything I met him I've, advertising his uh, Star Wars show that never got to air. Everything I've ever seen him in, I've appreciated his acting. I'm not even, saying even Team Mobile commercials. Yeah, I'm not saying that everything he's in is great because it's not, but. Everything I've seen him in, be it Clueless, Scrubs, Pitch Perfect, like his, he just always nails that character, and I always love seeing him on TV. I love it. Yeah, he, he's just he's just very relaxed in what he does. Yeah, and for so sure. It, and given it the just character, works that way. Given the character he was playing in this movie, I can't think of a better casting for it, for like just such a relaxed character. And now he just pops up in a ton of voice acting. Everywhere from like... Star Wars Resistance to Vampirina to um, I think he's he's in Robot Chicken clearly quite a bit. He was supposed to be in Legends of Tomorrow because he has, he's in Booster Gold literally in the last shot of the season, then it got canceled. I'm like, okay, suck. Um, congratulations, yeah, so you Booster Gold canceled. But uh, yeah, it, it, and so like th this movie does benefit from the fact that it has pretty much t pretty easy to like stars who aren't necessarily performing their best. But it are easy to like. Um, so this movie is cut and dry, cliche Christmas miracle movie. It's kind of uh, if you were to take my favorite version of a Christmas Carol, which is Scrooged, starring Bill Murray, you combine that with Delirious, the John Candy movie, and then you combine that with It's a Wonderful Life. And you take everything from those movies that make them cliche, put it into a blender, and then pour it into a drink, and now you have a snow globe Christmas. 
Or just watch the 2007 movie Snow Globe, which is about a young woman who discovers a Christmas-themed dream world inside a magical snow globe, and then you realize this is a genre. I don't know why there's a genre, but as one quote from from a YouTube had it, um, I don't know why this is a this is a genre. There's water. Those snow globes are filled with water. Here's the exact quote. So many movies where a woman wakes up inside a snow globe. Not one mentioned that snow globes are filled with water. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, so our main character... Meg. Meg. Uh, Meg. Meg. Such a... Shut yeah. up, Meg. <laughs> our main character, Meg, uh, is a movie producer, director, whatever. And Grumpy she's Christmas making, exec. Yeah, and she's making a Christmas movie that they're filming on Christmas Eve for some reason. And it's she's easy to do contracts that way. Yeah. And she's uh she's mean. She's a mean person. She's mean to everybody. She's very goal and job oriented. And uh we get introduced to our cast of characters. Um her boyfriend who doesn't seem like that bad of a dude um when he gets introduced and there's really him in the real world, they don't really give us any indication that he's going to turn out to be the complete denozzle that he is in the dream world, but whatever. Trevor uh, we Donovan, get, right? Yeah. Uh, we get the Santa Claus guy who... I, I thought for him. a second he was Casper Van Dien. I'm like, what? We get a Casper Van Dien? Nope, nope. Too, no, too Art, late. Art, Art Lafleur, who I've seen in... Sandlot, where he plays uh, Babe Ruth. Uh, what else have I seen him in? I've seen him in a lot of stuff. I recognize his face immediately. Art Lafleur, who is uh, Mr. Barnes. We get introduced to like her, some of her assistants, and then we meet a very attractive black woman. She black. She Latina. Christina Milan? Yeah. Mm, I let's find this out for science because I'm pretty sure she's Latina, but her, her non stage name is Flores, so that would lead me to think. She but the, is. there's there's a lot of mixing up because she's from New Jersey. She could be literally anything. <laughs> Being that she's from New Jersey, yeah. Is this um, racist? I feel like this is racist. You know, she's from New Jersey. New Jersey is New York City. That's a melting pot. She's Afro-Cuban. Afro-Cuban. Okay. But she so, is. Yes. Uh, so both. She's, she's both. Black yeah. Latina. Black Latina and absolutely gorgeous. She is beautiful. Um, we get introduced to her. She is like doing ringing the bell for Salvation Army. March of Dimes. Uh, whatever. Yes. She's one of them. She's drumming up money for a Christmas donations, and obviously Meg, being rude, uh, yells at her to leave, and then she like keeps like popping up in random places, and then she gives Meg a snow globe, and she's like, shake it, it's cool, and Meg like throws it on the ground because she's again rude, and she lifts it up and gives it back to her, and she's like, if you're gonna do that, you gotta mean it. So then she like just full on all body throws it and nails it right in the face, which I thought was probably one of the funniest things. Concussed her, yeah. Yeah, concussed her. Um, and then, and she, then wakes she wakes up, up married to Donald Faison. Married to Donald Faison with two absolutely perfect children living in this like storybook Christmas town that she then proceeds to ruin. And there's a play involved. They have to make sure this performance happens because that's not cliche at all. No. So. Very few are as good as, oh, darn it. What was the one where they had, where like the girl was supposed to do a nice calm song at the end and instead it had Charlie Day in it and they sing like a hardcore rap song with a ton of F-bombs in it. I know exactly what you're talking about. I cannot think of that movie. (laughs) But, or, you know, of course they also had it in um, Ocean's Eleven in West Virginia for Higgs. Okay. Logan Lucky. Logan Lucky. Which is a phenomenal film. It is. Uh, it is. Um, I'm, I'm just saying it's it's a trope. It's definitely in there. And yeah. this movie, as I said, is full of tropes. But it's, to be fair, I think that's sure. why people watch a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so we get introduced, reintroduced to every character we've met so far. 
They're now filling new roles. Her real life boyfriend is the mayor and he's a complete douche nozzle. Can I say that? Um, I have definitely had that exact quote on this show before or on, on a show before. And then I had the guest actually explain why it's dirty. And so trust me, you're fine. That was that was your interview with John St. John. That is correct. Yeah, I remember that interview because his son told him to change the line from douchebag to douche nozzle because douche nozzle is worse. I remember that specifically. <laughs> anyway, so the the mayor is a douche nozzle and he's trying to make more money for the town. Um, Mr. Barnes is like the happy old man. Uh, anyway, so they're running this play and because Meg in real life is a movie maker, she takes it over and tries to make it good. And everybody's upset that she's trying to actually make it good. Um, and then we get a couple of more reappearances of Sal. Uh, and very, it's a wonderful life-ish, like the angel coming to talk on your shoulder sort of thing. And then uh, she has the realization that she doesn't understand the meaning of Christmas. And now she understands the meaning of Christmas. And then she gets wanged in the head by a sign <laughs> and wakes up on the ground with a broken snow globe next to her because... She nailed herself in the face with that snow globe. And then she's had a complete Scrooge uh, personality shift and uh, makes everything right with everybody is nice to everyone. And then takes the snow globe to get it repaired. And oh, Donald fights on repair snow globes professionally. And thus they get it together. And we find out that Sal is actually Donald fights grandma, mom, grandma. Mom or grandma, I don't remember which one, and she's dead. And so it was like the ghost of his mom that was trying to get them back together through Christmas. Interesting, because I was like, he's definitely older than her. Yeah, so there's like a picture at the end that they see on the wall. And she's like, who's that lady? And it's Sal. And he's like, oh, that's my mom. She's dead now and she's like oh that's unfortunate um that's pretty much it there's one really weird moment in this movie that i was hoping you might be able to explain for me jeremiah because it didn't really make a lot of sense to me meg has realized that she screwed the entire world up and so she's planning on just leaving well the snow globe screwed the snow globe up yes yes the whole world because the snow globe is the whole world so you screw the whole world up and she's planning on leaving somehow not really clear how and she's talking to the kids that aren't her kids. And they talk about how they ask her if when she leaves, if their real mom is going to come back, which opens up this really like kind of dark. That she switched places with someone. Yeah, like it opens up this really kind of like dark rabbit hole that I went down for a minute or two where Donald Faison manipulated reality to swap his real wife with Meg and then convinced everybody to play along with it to convince her that she's actually married to him when in actuality he was married to somebody else and used Christmas magic to do it. But then nothing ever happens with that. Yeah, I think that's just a line that was dropped maybe from an earlier draft that they never never thought about and they just had to roll with it. Um, Because, you know, the writer for this movie, these aren't ones that we're used to from at least the Asylum movies that we watch. Though, I will say, one of them is Delandra Mesa, who wrote a lot of Z Nation, which is an Asylum zombie TV show, which went on for a lot of seasons. Like six. And after this movie, her follow up was Blood Lake Attack of the Killer Lampreys, which we we did see. Uh, I think that's the one with Christopher Lloyd, right? It was where Christopher Lloyd plays Adam West from Family Guy. And then the other writer is Naomi Selfman, who has written a lot of Asylum stuff, which you have definitely seen. Um, so she wrote Evil Eyes. Um, I see she wrote Number One Cheerleader Camp, 18 year old virgin. Um, Mega Python versus Gatoroid. 
two movies we are very much looking forward to seeing. Barely legal, she wrote, but uh, Gr- Grim Snow White, Bikini Spring Break, um, Bone Alone, uh, sorry, Alone for Christmas. She wrote this one. Um, I almost married a serial killer. Good grief. Um, I think those are the only other ones she wrote here, but you know, she's written stuff. And honestly, when it comes to Christmas things, the expectations are a bit different, and the budget's a whole lot easier to spend in a, you know a uh, yeah. also more uh, consistent way. It sounds like that writer has written the majority of the asylum films that I still want to see. Number one cheerleading camp, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Um, this movie is a Christmas movie. It is a Hallmark Christmas movie. I'm not going to say it's the best of them. It's not the necessarily the worst of them. Uh, I'd say it's a lower tier of like what you'd expect from Hallmark. Um, they have done better, but there's also certain actors they have in like all of their movies, so you kind of expect a little different things. Um, but as far as a Christmas tropey Christmas movie goes, it's honestly perfectly fine, perfectly watchable. The type of movie you'd expect to be watching on at Christmas time um, on TV. It, it it might be lower tier of them, but it's perfectly fine for what you'd expect from a Christmas film. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a movie. It's, it's better than a lot of asylum stuff that we've seen. Uh, but it's not like a must see Christmas film. That makes sense. So, the person who d- directed this, she's directed some of Z Nation, of course. But I will say, she does have one movie on here that I know is not related to this one, but due to our love of a certain musical, the fact that she p- she directed a film called Prisoners of Love. What? Give me a second. I'm looking this up. Prisoner of Love, new time above. If you've seen the producers, she uh, that's how that's how it ends. Is that's one of the musicals Prisoner that they did. Prisoner of Love, 2022. But she also has won Emmys, um, so... If you look up Prisoner of Love, there are a lot of things that pop up on IMDb. 2022 is what she did. But I'm just saying, if you've seen the producers, that title's going to start getting a song stuck in your head. And it's on Tubi, so as far as you know, it honestly could be Asylum-touched, but I doubt it. Um, but she she has an Emmy. She clearly has some talent here. Um. Yeah, I, honestly, it's it's fine, which for an asylum movie means it's upper tier automatically. Yeah, fine. Um, fine asylum is like top tier. I'm going to show some pictures while you're looking at this because there's not a lot of pictures of this one, but there is some. So here's who the did cover. You say it was Jody Binstock. So here's the cover. Honestly, pretty accurate cover for an asylum movie, especially. They didn't like make up a bunch of stuff for the cover. He he looks like a stuck up jock. That's the boyfriend. Um, I think it's the well, yeah, sweater. He, and he the doesn't collar. seem like that bad of a dude. Like I think this picture just it just reminds me of like a, a high school jock, like who would like beat up the nerd. Yeah, he plays lacrosse. Um, there he is. This is the picture when I first saw this film. I'm like, oh look, Casper Van Dyne. Because that does doesn't that look like him? Like it looks like a young guy. Casper Van Dyne, yeah. And this looks like Donald Glover. It does. That looks like Donald Glover from the community. A little bit. Glendale Community little, College. A little bit. I don't. I do, I think that's the director. Yeah. She must really like being on Christmas sets. Yeah, that is a big smile. That is a horrifying smile. I don't. I don't remember this redhead lady at all. Wait, is this egg plantation? I think so. Uh, okay. Donald, five, so on. His daughter. Wit, director with the two kids. Hmm. Santa from the movie they're filming at the beginning, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's like Lifetime. 
that's too white for this movie, but that's in the very beginning. Yeah. And back to the beginning. So, you see, it's perfectly fine. And um, I don't think there's really much more to say about this one. I, I do like Donald Faison. I Honestly, I willingly watch this for Donald Faison because he's just a very likable person. And I like meeting him in person. He's a great person to talk to. He's a great person to see on screen. I can watch... Well, most of the cast of Scrubs, honestly, is pretty fun just to watch in general. Um, but like even his team mobile commercials, I'll just watch because well, him and I forgot his name. That guy, the co-star in Scrubs, who did Garden State and so on. Like they're just they're clearly friends, and it's I good think, to see them together. I think technically he's the star of Scrubs. Not uh, I think I think <laughs> Scrubs has a, an ensemble, at least after season one. I suppose. 